In this video, I will show you how to customize standard reports in Google Analytics 4. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to the Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where I teach people how to work with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So if you want to stay up to date with GE4, then consider subscribing to this channel. Google Analytics 4 allows you to customize standard reports. You can define what kind of metrics are displayed, what kind of reports are available on the sidebar, and so on. And in this video, I will show you how to do that. By the way, this tutorial is taken from my in-depth Google Analytics 4 course. In that course, I focus not only on the setup, but on the other two very important things. Planning and getting insights out of your data. A lot of content in that course is exclusive and not available on my YouTube channel or my blog. You can learn more about that course below the video. All right, let's customize GA4 reports. In Google Analytics 4, you can customize standard reports, but just to some extent. The features that I will show you have the potential, but there is still a lot to improve. So hopefully Google will address that in the near future. To customize your reports, you will need to go back to your own property because we do not have enough permissions to do that in the official Google Analytics 4 property. So once you go back to your own property, you will notice that whenever you are going to reports section right here, you will see the pencil icon, which is customize report. So if I go to engagement, pages and screens, then what I could do is that I could remove this scatter plot because honestly, I never found them useful. So whenever I see them in one of the standard reports, I just hide them. So what we can do is that we can just click the pencil icon while we are in this report. And then we can click this icon to hide the scatter plot. In fact, we can switch the scatter plot to the line chart if you want and click apply and it will be displayed like this. However, what I don't like in this chart is that this chart shows only the results of the top five pages. Instead, I would like to see the overall traffic or the overall number of the page views that I get day by day. So I don't know, maybe they will address that in the future, but right now, my main goal is just to get rid of that scatter plot because it is not useful. So I will probably just leave this line chart and then hide the bar chart as well, like that. And then I can click save. And then you can select that save changes to the current report. Then click save. And now this report has been modified. So let's go back. Huh, looks like some bug because I have completely removed the chart. So now let's click save. And now let's go back. All right. And if you don't like this, because I don't blame you, like it makes sense to hate this kind of report. I mean, this kind of chart. So you can just get rid of the chart at all and then just have the table visible right here. And you can do the same thing for the other reports. Like you can review and see if some parts of the report are not needed. So that way you can clean your interface. Then when it comes to monetization, for example, if you're not working with mobile apps and you don't work with publisher ads, you could basically just get rid of these two items right here. So if you're working with someone who also uses Google Analytics 4 and you don't want them to be confused or navigate unnecessary reports, then you could just remove them. And again, that way you would clean the interface. So that can be done by clicking library in the reports section. If you don't see the library right here, just reload the page and it should appear. But again, obviously you should have enough permissions in your property. So if you are the admin of the property, you will definitely be able to do that. So let's go to library. And here we will see a new term that is called collections. So collections basically are these parts that are expandable right here. So we have user and we have two life cycles. Looks like, like another bug in Google Analytics 4. Well, good job, Google. Let's try refreshing the page and see if that fixes the problem. And it did. So again, what I've noticed is that very often refreshing the page actually solves the issue. Not only this one, there are some other situations. So if something is not working, just refresh the page, that might help. So I was talking about the collections. So the collection right here is lifecycle. The other one is user. And we can see those collections right here. We see that they are published and we see what kind of folders do they have. And then inside those folders, we have reports like events, conversions, and so on. So what we could do is that let's say that I don't want to have the retention reports because 
again, I don't find them useful and I don't want to have publisher ads and in-app purchases because I will not be working with the mobile app in this particular situation. So I could click edit collection and then I can just remove retention and then I can remove the in-app purchases and publisher ads. Then save and save changes to the current collection. Now, if I go back and refresh the page, I will no longer see the retention report and in the monetization report, I will see only e-commerce purchases and overview. But if we look at this from the other angle, maybe you have inherited some Google Analytics 4 property and in that property, you are missing some reports like e-commerce purchases, maybe you're missing something else and you see almost nothing. So that probably happened because someone has removed those reports. So now let's try to add those reports again. Let's click edit collection and I click edit collection in the life cycle. And now let's see what we can have. So first of all, we should create a new topic. So topic is like a folder of reports. So topic could be retention, click apply. And then we can drag from the overview reports, the retention overview. Then we can click save and save to the current collection. And then we also removed several detail reports from the monetization. One was in-app purchases like this. And then another one was publisher ads and then click save and save changes to the current collection. Now let's go back. And now if I refresh the page, I will see the retention and I will see the monetization. So we're back on track. Another thing that you might find useful is related to Google search console. So if you have connected search console to Google analytics 4, you can add some additional collection right here related to Google search console. And in this demo property, I haven't connected anything, but I have done that in my regular property. So now I will click library and you will be able to do these steps. If you have connected search console with GE4 and probably maybe 24 hours will be needed. I'm not sure about that anyway. So now when I click on the library, I will see the life cycle and the user collections and they are the default ones. But also now I see a new collection, which is search console. It will be available once you connect search console with GA4 and now it is unpublished. So if you want to publish it, you should click three dots and then click publish. And now it will appear right here again, a bug. We see a duplicate. So just refresh the page and it's still a bug. So let me just quickly see what other collections do we have. And it looks like two collections are now published. So if you face the same situation, just delete one collection and that should fix the problem. Now I've heard that some people face the situation where they cannot publish. So they might not maybe find the publish button. So in that case, what I would suggest is that you make a copy of this search console collection and then publish that copy. So that should work. And then in the search console, we will see queries report. So basically keywords that your people are entering in the search. And again, get rid of that nasty scatter plot. So I will remove that click save and save changes to the current report. And in this case, it looks like this particular chart is more useful because here I can see not just the top five keywords, but I can see all the keywords and how they change over time. So, I mean, it shows the total number of clicks. So this is actually the report that I would like to have in other parts as well. And I hope that in the future they will add that. So one thing that I'm missing right now, and that would be very useful is that if I try to build a report, so for example, I go to library and I try to create a new report and click, let's say, create detail report, I would like to create a report just for particular events. For example, I want to see the data only from view search results event that is automatically tracked when the visitor uses site search. So in that case, you know, I could see what kind of keywords are people entering on my website in the search bar. But unfortunately, if I try to create an event report, I cannot add any filters to narrow down just to a certain event like view search results. So I hope that they will fix this in the future because right now when you build a new report in a library, you will basically be able to build just the same report that already exists in another part of the interface. This is just a copy of the regular events report. And I would like to have something else like, you know, maybe just a list of particular events, but I presume that eventually that should be fixed by GE4 definitely because this should allow people to build default reports. And those reports would then be available to stakeholders and they could easily access that. So keep an eye on this feature. Maybe you will eventually at some point in the future, find some filters or something like that right here. 
But again, if you don't want certain metrics or you want some other metrics, you can add them right here. So when you create a new report or you customize a certain report, you can click on metrics and then you can click add metric and select some other metric that might not be available by default right here. The same thing applies to standard reports. So now let's discard the changes and then let's say, I don't know, engagement and pages and screens. And then here I can get rid of the scatter plot. So I will remove that. I will switch the bar chart to line chart. And then in the metrics, I would like to see, I don't know, let's take a look. What do we have? Add metric. Actually, unique scrolls, I don't find that useful. So I will remove that. But instead, I will probably want to have something like sessions. Like how many sessions did happen on that particular page? And then I can add this somewhere closer to users, maybe views, sessions, and then users. And then let's click apply. And here is that metric. In fact, I will probably get rid of the charts at all and we'll just have the table. Now click save, save changes, and go back. Now again, we have the duplicate, so refresh the page. And here we have the report where I have views. Now I have another metric which was not available by default, which is sessions, users, and basically you can decide what kind of metrics are you going to use. I would also recommend zooming out a bit the report so that you could see more metrics at the same time in the interface. And that is how you can customize Google Analytics for reports. Improvements are needed, but there is some potential there. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Analytics 4 or Google Tag Manager, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.